Caterpillar and Merck just out with earnings in the last few minutes. Comcast and McDonald's are on deck. Let's bring back Surat Sethi from DCLA. And Sylvia Jablonski is also joining us. She's chief investment officer, co-founder of Defiance ETF. She thought Caterpillar uh, would benefit from reopening and infrastructure, uh, Sylvia. And actually, you said Merck will be a miss, uh, or at least it's going to be tough to beat, given that uh, you know they weren't really involved in the vaccine race. And now we know that some of their drugs uh, uh, were hurt by people not visiting doctors' offices. So, what do you make of those two? Yeah, so you know, Caterpillar is is a, a very strong beat actually um, on both EPS and on revenue. So, so that's promising to see, and I think that they continue to benefit further from infrastructure infrastructure spending and the reopening and sort of getting back to business. You know, the stock's up twenty seven percent this year, but I but I think it has good room to run in terms of where we're going, where government spending is going. Uh, in terms of Merck, I, you know, I, I expected to see a miss. Uh, last quarter was a miss. Uh, as we said, a lot of a lot of patients just aren't going to hospitals and doctors' offices. So although they saw good growth in Keytruda and Gardasil and the Animal Health, uh, you know, they, they simply need a lot more to get going. So I, I think that, you know, Merck is a, is a sort of slow and steady long-term play. I'm not sort of allergic to the stock after this earnings announcement, but, you know, they had some bad news. They had two vaccine failures. They had... Um, one antigen failure, basically, that they pulled for a trial. So I think with the continued growth of Gardasil, Kichuta, the animal health, they they have some room to run. The macro story is definitely there for the healthcare sector in general. It's defensive-like in nature, lots of aging baby boomers. You know, I think they they sort of have to get get out of COVID. They didn't benefit from from the vaccines and whatnot. So, um, you know, once once the world opens up, patients get back to doctors, they'll, they'll benefit there. What do you notice uh, in the... The, the last two that, that we just talked about, Surat, since we spoke to you. Um, I, I think just to add to a couple of things on, on the Merck side, you're seeing that across the pharma, anyone who's not involved in the vaccines, it's, whether it's Bristol Myers or Glaxo, and these stocks are trading at 10, 11 times earnings, and they're reflecting the growth that's lacking right now. But I think if you're looking out a year to two years, the opportunity, and this is kind of where people talk about value, this is that barbell approach. If you if you want, you know, the Facebooks and, and the Apples uh, and Googles that grow really fast. But here's the other side of it: that when comps come back a year from now, you're going to see growth from these type of stocks. And I'll throw other companies in there, like a CVS as well. All those companies that have had all their products pushed forward, and you're not going to get it. In terms of infrastructure and CAT, I mean, blowout numbers, uh, and, and you're going to see more money thrown into the cats, the deers of the world, the cyclicals. Um, industrial stocks. A lot of them are reflecting it. They're not cheap in any way, uh, and they're momentum stocks, but they're, they're also going to do well, at least for the next uh, three to four quarters. Uh, we haven't got a lot of time, uh, Sylvia, but you think Amazon's going to be big and Twitter too? Yeah, I think Amazon's going to be huge. I think Amazon's going to be one of those absolute crush numbers like, like Apple and, and Google. Um, I, you know, I don't think that the pandemic sort of being over is going to change people's habits. Buying on Amazon is now a habit. They're going to see growth in AWS. They're, you know, hiring more workers to keep up with demand. I just think that that stock absolutely crushes it and surprises us to the upside. So remain absolutely bullish there. Twitter, too, I think they're going to, you know, they, they, they lost users uh, last quarter. I think they're going to pick up on that after some of the privacy efforts they've made and, you know, hopefully monetize on some advertising there. So. Uh, I, I like both of those names going into, right. into earnings. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.